living under a new covert identity, the now retired and seasoned elite hitman, nestled in the heart of Rio de Janeiro. However, in order to ultimately be freed from the grave danger of being exposed by his arch nemesis, he will be forced to agree to carry out three impossible suicide missions throughout the four corners of the world. Because Crane's ridiculous ultimatum is serious, time is of the essence now. Though his days of killing are obviously not gone, can he still carry out his greatest work without jeopardizing his newfound love? In Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, Arthur Bishop, has been living in seclusion since pretending to be dead, and posing as Mr. Santos. He sets up an explosive to boat as he leaving. Using his motorcycle, he toured the area and went to his favorite spot to hang out. At the same location, he gets contacted by an enigmatic woman. She says that Bishop's company wants him to come out of retirement so he may orchestrate three target deaths as accidents. The woman was accompanied by a bunch of assassins as well. Bishop snaps a photo of her with his phone, as she reaches for a gun. As he presses the table up against her, the other hitmen close in on him. Bishop battles each of them. He was approached by someone, and tried to stab him with a knife, but he countered by pressing the person's face against a hot grill. A hitman then tried to confront him, however, he evaded it and stabbed the attacker with a knife. Their fight continued until a fire broke out, and he neutralized the situation. Meanwhile, when he saw backup approaching, he leapt onto a tram car. He was being pursued by the woman, and she and her group boarded the tram car. When they realized that Bishop was on top of their ride, she shot at him. As she nearly caught him, Bishop managed to get away by leaping onto the back of a hang glider and escaped completely. When he returned to his place, he noticed that there were people on his boat. Using his cell phone, he detonated the explosive set up on it. He then grabbed his belongings and burned his identity. At a place in Thailand, Bishop went there to hide, and he was greeted by his friend, May, who then escorted him to his house. He retrieved his hidden belongings from under the floor. When Bishop looks into the woman, he discovers that her boss is none other than Rhea Crane, of Bishop's former childhood friend. The next day, by the shore, Bishop notices a stunning woman, Gina. He asked the man about May's whereabouts to ask for first aid. May noticed bruises on Gina's arms. Later that night, on the ocean, May sees a boat and overhears Gina sounding like she's being attacked. May quickly approached Bishop to ask for help in rescuing the poor woman. Reluctant to get involved, he was still compelled to do so because of May's plea. He went to the said boat, tried to stop the man from hurting Gina, but the man fought back, forcing him to silence and kill him. He gave the unconscious Gina to May to take her ashore and stayed behind to deal with the boat. He discovered Gina's identity and found a picture of him on her cell phone. Before he finally left, he blew up the boat. When he arrived home, he confronted Gina about her connection to Crane, and they had a confrontation. Later, she admitted that she was just being blackmailed, so she was forced to do the task to get closer to him. Bishop promised to protect Gina. Afterwards, Bishop views a video of Gina instructing kids in Cambodia. On the beach, when he approached Gina, she tells how Crane abducted one of her friends and threatened to hurt the kids if she didn't comply. After their conversation, Gina walked towards the sea while Bishop watched, then she swam, diving into the depths of the beautiful underwater world. From his house, he noticed a suspicious boat in the ocean. Using his binoculars, he suspected that they were Crane's men. Bishop holds Gina tightly, to pretend to be close to each other, and to be observed by Crane's men, and brings her to a pub where May works. They were tied up, forced to join the celebration. They get closer as a result, realizing that Crane's men are observing them, and they have their drinks. That evening, Gina approached Bishop to thank him and ask for forgiveness, saying that she couldn't bear any harm happening to the children. Bishop also recounted his past with Crane and told her, this is not your fault. Later, they had a lovemaking session. Afterward, he had Gina hold on to the watch his father had given him. Finally, the day they were expecting has arrived, when Crane's men will come. Bishop and Gina are cornered on the beach by Crane's men. Gina is taken, while Bishop battles the hitmen. Crane was called by his men to inform him that they have captured Bishop. In Thailand, where he was taken, Bishop was inspected by a female member of Crane's team before being escorted to Crane. After a protracted absence, Bishop is called in to meet with Rhea Crane. Because he believed that Bishop had abandoned him when Crane needed him, Crane harbors animosity toward Bishop. Bishop is given the order by Crane to kill the three targets, or Gina would perish. Bishop nods grudgingly. The first person targeted is Krill, a warlord being held captive in a Malaysian prison. Bishop travels to Malaysia, 
The prison is 70 miles out of the sea, set atop cliffs more than 100 meters high and surrounded by shark-infested waters, basically impossible get in and out, and he's surrounded by his team of loyal soldiers. He searched for the most wanted person in Malaysia and assumed its identity, including facial features, and passport. He gathered some paraphernalia that can use to accomplish the mission, and studied the area. He then intentionally got arrested himself by the police. And after getting himself detained, he enters the building where Krill is located by. While getting his lunch, he steals the knife from the jailed man. While Bishop is inside the prison, he interrupts a man who was preparing to assassinate Krill. He was greeted by Krill, who was impressed by him, and he was invited for a dinner. Afterwards, Bishop goes to Krill's small cottage by the prison yard. As Krill's talking about his scheme to take over Africa after he gets out of jail, Bishop suddenly approaches him unseen and uses a wooden rod to strangle him by forcing it up against a window bar. And he overdosed Krill with drugs. After achieving his goal, he then leaves. The surveillance cameras pick up Bishop during the altercation, alerting the guards to the situation. Using his paraphernalia, he created an improvised explosive device and used it to breach a wall. To get away, he strolls through and he jumped from a cliff more than 100 meters high into the sea. He dives underwater, together with sharks, while being shot at by guards. A fishing boat is waiting for him. When they pull the net, they were surprised that he was not there, only to realize that he was already on board. Bishop calls Crane on his iPad so he may talk to Gina. She informs him that she will be eliminated if he does not kill the next victim in the allotted 36 hours. Crane informs Bishop that the next person on the list is named Adrian Cook, the head of an organization that runs an underage trafficking. In Sydney, Australia, Bishop locates Cook's flat, and he took aerial shots of the establishment. The walls and floors are three feet thick concrete, biometric sensors are impossible to hack, he studied the timing of Cook's routine. He pretended to buy an apartment, and called the agent's cell phone. Afterward, he took a photo of the door key. He studied the floor plan of the establishment, created a solution that can break strong glass, and observed the timing of its effect. He sets up his trap with precision. Bishop climbs the building while attached to a wire, as Cook swims in his glass cantilever pool outside his apartment. Using a device he created, he breaks the pool's glass, letting the water pour out and sending Cook tumbling to his death. Bishop makes a clean escape once more. In a video call, he talked to Gina again, showing him a watch to make Bishop notice the number written on her back. Because of this, he found out the whereabouts of Crane's yacht. He immediately went there. After boarding the boat, he systematically killed the encountered personnel one by one before approaching Gina. Due to the number of enemies, he had to fight, shoot, and use his extraordinary fighting skills to defeat them. Unfortunately, he was captured by Crane's men. Bishop was told that he must kill the final target right away because he is out of time, to get his woman, before he could forcibly escape. In Varna, Bulgaria, Bishop looked for his final target, there, he learned that he was just being used to eliminate Crane's competitors in the business. The man is billionaire Max Adams, has the most comprehensive security system, he has a large fleet of submarines. Nobody gets in or out, the hardest sight to penetrate. In order to accomplish his mission, he went to the hospital. At the rooftop, using his sniper rifle to shoot one of its guards. Shortly after, the hospital dispatched an emergency helicopter, which Bishop boarded ahead of everyone else. Upon arrival at the location, he immediately set up an alarm, alerting the guards. He then takes down the guards he encountered until he reached the panic room. Using a grenade, he bombed the elevator carrying Adams. Adams discovers Bishop waiting for him in his safe room, but rather than murdering him, the two decide to work together. Bishop has Adams blow up his equipment to simulate his death. Afterward, he rescued Adams, and taken to an island. Then calls Crane that the task is done. Because Crane wants to see Adams' corpse, they set up a rendezvous so that Crane may return Gina to him. Crane, though, intends to murder Bishop. While Crane's men were traveling, Bishop returned to Adams' location. He set up traps, improvised explosives, grenades, and heavy machine guns and others. When the enemies arrived, he shot some of the hitmen to create a commotion and activate the setup traps. Bishop watches as Crane's soldiers take off and move toward his death. Some of the enemies were demolished by the heavy machine gun, traps with grenades, improvised explosives, and more. He engaged in a fierce battle, and gunfire ensued. He kills them all while Crane is watching, and makes his way to Crane's yacht. Upon reaching Crane's yacht, he immediately confronted some of the hitmen. He engaged in a fight using his knife, 
stabbing the enemy, and using his hand-to-hand -hand combat skills. After defeating the enemy, he threw the knife at the CCTV where Crane was watching him. Gina tried to resist the hitman, but she was shot, and beaten. He kills more hitmen with gunshots, stabs, hand-to-hand -hand combat and explosives before reaching Crane. When he locates Gina, they learn that Crane has the boat set up to blow. Bishop locks her in a chamber, and released it so she can flee as he finishes Crane. Bishop eliminated the men before facing off with Crane. When only Crane was left, the two of them fought. The two of them square off in battle, as time runs out. Bishop told Crane, you're going to get your third kill, and it won't look like an accident. Crane uses the anchor chain to drag Bishop down, and tried to murder him using the anchor. The two continued to fight. But Bishop succeeds in doing so and uses the chains to restrain Crane. Shortly, Bishop flees, before the boat explodes, killing Crane. When Gina emerges into the chamber, she notices the capsized boat. After being saved and given medical attention by paramedics, she finds out there were no survivors. Max Adams and his team were also there to observe the remaining debris of the yacht and what happened to Bishop. Before they left, he noticed that there was CCTV in the area. Gina returned to Cambodia to teach again, and be with the children once more. She writes a letter to let May recognize that she is safe in doing what she loves. When Bishop then appears, Gina is then surprised. Adams is seen examining security footage. He notices that Bishop managed to sneak into a chamber, before the boat exploded. As soon as that boat part was found, he exited. Adams was impressed by Bishop's cleverness. He chuckles, and deletes the evidence. For more videos similar to this, don't forget to subscribe and enable notifications. Thank you for watching.